Hi everyone, welcome to the fourth episode of my free music software guides. My name is Oscar, and on today's episode, we'll have a look at creatability. This is the first of two episodes dedicated to this Google project. It's a collection of musical experiments with accessibility in mind. So be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. Here are the four apps we'll have a look at. The first one is Keyboard. The second one is Body Synth. Synth. Drums. The third one is Clarion Light. And the fourth one is Sampler. Before we start, just a quick note on technology and music education. I think that technology is very useful in bridging the gap, that is flattening the learning curve. It allows you to very quickly get some results and be creative with those. Creatability, being a collection of tools with accessibility in mind, does this very well. You can use your camera, your mouse, your keyboard, to make music fast. And that is very valuable not only for small children or people with special needs, but to anyone. It's very rewarding in a way to have the return immediately. So let's get started. Just keep in mind the creatability was made with desktop and laptop computers in mind. So if you're using a tablet or a smartphone, it might not work as well, particularly if it's iOS. The first of the apps we're going to look into is Keyboard. Let's start from Creatability's main page. The URL is on the screen right now. You can also find it in the description below. It's experiments.withgoogle.com forward slash collection forward slash creatability. If you scroll down after you see the tutorial video, you can see the collection of experiments. The first one, as we mentioned, is keyboard. So let's click on launch experiment and you can see a uh, an overview, you can choose the tutorial or start playing. Also check the guys that created this. It's always good to do that. When you open the experiment, here's what you see. There are five notes on the screen, C, D, E, G, and A. All I have to do is hover the mouse or click on the screen if you are in a mobile device and you'll hear the corresponding notes with the marimba sound. You can but you can obviously change this, for instance, to a choir. You can also change the scale, like the major scale, or the minor scale. The music theory nerd in me kind of cringes when he sees D and D sharp, but... Sounds like a minor scale. Let's change it back to the pentatonic. Also change the root note. For instance, this is the D pentatonic scale. How many notes on the screen? Let's change it to 12. The MIDI out, so you can control an external instrument or a virtual instrument with this. And this is the real fun part. The tracking is done by the keyboard and the mouse at the moment, but I can change it to body. So it loads my webcam and I can play it with my nose. Have fun with it. Now that we saw keyboard, let's have a look at Body Synth. Starting from Creatability's website again, Body Synth is the third experiment. When you launch it, it will by default load the web camera. And here's what happens. So your movements are translated to sound. It will detect your face and your skeleton 
I'm a bit close to the screen at the moment, but you can see how it works. It's actually better if you step a bit back. You can change the sounds right here. Synth. Strings. And drums. You can also change the harmony. These are all major chords. D and so on. The real fun part for me is to activate the voice command and you can say things like synth, drums, guitar, A chord, B chord, C chord, Also adjust the sensitivity right here. If it's more sensitive, it will play more notes. And if it's less sensitive, it will play fewer notes. Meaning it takes a larger movement to trigger the sounds. Have fun! And next on the menu, we have Clarion Light. Clarion is the fifth experiment on Creatability's website. Before you open the experiment, be sure to check Open Up Music. They, they do amazing work with young disabled people. It's definitely worth your attention. Let's launch the experiment. See that we have a pattern here. It's just a square. You can hover your, your mouse and listen to the woodwind sound. Let's change it to strings and choose a different pattern, such as this one. If you click Show Waveform, you have some visual feedback of what's happening. But the fun really begins, I think, when you select your body. So it launches the webcam, and again, You can use your nose to play this. Have fun experimenting with Clarion Light. And the last of the Creatability apps for today is Sampler. Sampler is right next to Clarion Light. Be sure to check NYU's Ability Project, it's a very cool one as well. And you have four circles, each of them is a group of instruments. can change the sounds right here. The orchestral one is one of my favorites. Be sure to listen to the other ones. There's also MIDI out for controlling an external or virtual instrument and the best part, body tracking. So using your nose to play. There's also the option to add custom sounds. We will find out more about this on the first activity. As you probably already know by now, in the free music software, guys, I always give you some activity suggestions for you to do while you stay at home. The first activity is to use sampler with a camera to play your own songs. For this, you can use any sounds that you record yourself, that you have on your computer, or that you make with other musical apps. For instance, in the first episode, we used Groove Pizza to make loops. Remember how to use it to export your songs? Here is a song I made with Groove Pizza, have a listen. In order to save my file, I simply go to Share and then Download as Audio and it will save my WAV file. And on the second episode, we use Typotone. Here's how to do the same thing with this website. Here is a postcard I sent with Typotone. This is my address. Have a listen. Now 
Now if I click this button right here, it will save an audio file of my composition. On episode 3 we used SongMaker to do a musical loop. You can also save your WAV file with it. Here's how. And here's the loop I did with SongMaker. If I go to save and then download wave, it will also download the sound file. So we saved three sound files, but there's still one missing. So I decided to pick up my guitar and to record the short musical phrase that goes well with the rest. Have a look. <laughs> Now that I have my sound files, I loaded Sampler, I'll click in Add Custom Sounds and then drag and drop one by one to each of the sounds. I'll click Done and then turn on Body Tracking and here it goes. Have fun! Now activity number two is storytelling. There are three steps for this activity. Step number one, choose four sounds. Think of these in terms of sounds, not in terms of songs or music. If you don't have them or don't know where to get them, have a look at freesound.org. Freesound.org allows you to search for sounds. I just searched for rain and you have 7163 sounds to choose from that you can download for free if you register. For step two of the second activity, write a short story where you mention these four sounds. After you're finished writing the story, you can tell it using your camera, the four sounds you chose and sampler. I've added my four sounds, a forest, stream, bells and kids playing. Once upon a time, there was a wizard who lived in a forest. One day, he heard church bells in the distance. So he started walking along the stream to the church where he found some kids playing. The third activity is to dance your song. We're going to be using body synth for this and the ability to change chords with your voice. So you can either record a new song or you can use it to play a pre-existing song. Remember this one from the last episode? Here's me trying to play those chords with the voice command. C chord. G chord. C chord. F chord, C chord, C chord, C chord, G chord, C chord. That's all for today. Be sure to subscribe so that you get notified about part two because there are a lot of musical experiments in creativity. So I split them into two episodes. Also, for the next episode, I'm going to make an Audacity tutorial. Many of you have asked me to do this, and it's a very useful resource for teachers, students and parents during distance learning and online learning. So we're going to look into the basics of sound recording with Audacity next week. See you then. Three, two,
Bye.